Welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you how to create a cohort heat map. I use them all the time with my Google Analytics of all things. And then they're really great if you're looking at customer lifetime value. And this is what the visualization looks like. It looks like this matrix that's sort of half filled in. You have your cohorts that based on the time when they have their first order and then a certain period and the amount of consumption of what that looks like. And the values you put in the heat map are sort of arbitrary. We'll use in our data, Tableau Superstore 2020.4, we'll use uh, customer names, but then we'll use sales for our values because it's very typical. Again, been trying to keep it as generic as possible. A sales could be any value. It's a placeholder for the analysis. And then our periods, and we're doing this by quarter, but you could break it out at any type. You want to do by year, by month, by week, it doesn't matter. Just looks nice with this data, how we have it set up here. So let's build this viz. I'm going to start with a new sheet. And on that new sheet, I'm going to create a new calculated field. And we'll just call this, um, actually, even better yet, we'll go and find order date, which is our main field for the date field. I'm going to right click and create a custom date. And I'm going to use this because then I don't deal with Tableau's hierarchy at all. I'm just going to call this quarter. I'm going to put a, a space here. I'm going to choose quarters and I'm going to choose date value. Very important. I choose date value over date part. I'm adding a little space here because I already have a calculation called quarter. So quarter with a space for me. Next, we're going to create a new calculated field. We're going to call it cohort. We're going to figure out when those cohorts started. I'm also going to add a space because I, again, have this calculation created, but we'll just use a fixed statement and we'll say for customer name, let's calculate the min of the quarter. And remember, mine has a space. You probably could just have it as is, but that's it. This will tell us the starting point for any particular quarter whatsoever. We'll just say, okay, cohort quarter done. This is a perfect calculation. We don't want to change it one bit. I'm going to hit OK. We're actually almost done. In fact, we can take cohort and place this out on, on, uh, on our rows and we can change this to an exact date. And we'll also change it to discrete. Very important, we choose discrete. And the, the labels here are fine. Let's just do entire view. Uh, we'll format those at the end. Now that we have this created, we need to figure out the period. So I'm gonna create a third calculation. We call it period. So it's the number of periods since that first order. We're going to use the date diff calculation. And we're going to do this with three parts. The first part is the date part. Then we need the start date and the end date. So our date part is all lowercase in quotes quarter. Our second part is our cohort. So that's going to be our start date. And our end date is just our quarter, the value of any of our orders. And that's it. That's period. And the reason I have an error is because it already exists. So I'll just add a space, keep it inconsistent afterwards. So period with a space. Let's take that value, place that out on columns. We're gonna have to change this again to dimension. We'll change it to discrete as well. That's it. We now have almost this whole thing done. The last thing I could do is place it on sales. Oh, dang, you know what just happened? Is if you look at this, we have spaces in here empty spots where no orders were made. Well, that's extremely frustrating. How do we fill those in? Well, that's fine. Let's create a calculation to fix it. And this one's a little bit more complicated, but I'll try to break it down as I go. We basically need to identify where these blank spots are, but um, not have it be, um, right, not have it be all these other white spots because we're gonna use a, a table calculation and that's going to densify our data and it's going to fill in all these spots, which, you know, isn't ideal, but it's what's going to happen. So what do we need to do? Write a really good calculation. Let's just say if the min of a period, since period is already on our view, it's not that big of a deal. It's just going to return the period itself is less than or equal to the window max of the max period. Now this is going to return 15, 14, 13, 12, all these points, and it needs to be less than or equal to that for each cohort, which that'll pretty much solve all the color over here, but we still have these two openings that we want to fill in with zeros and also fill in with color. 
So we'll also say or not is null. So if it's not null, our lookup of our min period. So looking over, looking to the left, one value. If we look left on either of these, or sorry, look right over one, they'll see that there's a value. And as long as it's not null, fill this back in. So that's the key here with this calculation. Uh, then what we're going to do is say zn lookup uh, sum of sales, because that's our value we're using. And we'll just say lookup zero. We're going to look at itself and wrap our zn. And then we'll say else null. I usually don't fill that in, but there's a little hint of what I'm going to do. I have to create one more calculation after this. And end. Let's see what happens. I'm missing a parenthesis right here for the is null. There it is. There is our calculation. I'll let you take a look at it. It's a little more complicated for certain, but that is what we're just going to call our sales. Um, we can call this our sales color. Sorry, this is our sales label. Sales label. We're going to create another one for color in a second here. Okay, sales label. All right, I'm just going to click and drag label now on the label and Oh no, color changed. Well, Tableau's mark type just changed. We'll just change it back to automatic. Great, we filled in our values, but because we densified our data, Tableau has um, taken all those null values here and still given them color. Let's not worry. There's a workaround for all of this. Um, we just need to come up with a different color scheme than what we have. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go find sales label, our calculation we just created. We're going to duplicate it. And we're going to edit it. And let's just change sales label to sales color. And our color change on this calculation is just take our null here on the else statement and just change it to like negative 100,000 or something lar very large and negative and hit OK. Now we have sales color created. I'm just going to click and drag and replace sales color on color. And now you'll see we've got this stark difference happening over here with our null values. Well, we don't need to worry. We just need to edit our color. We can click on color, double click, change our color. And now in the color tab here, we can just change the hex color and type in FF, 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 that's white. Hit OK. And now it fills in with white. And that's it. That is our cohort analysis that we're looking to do. We filled in the values and without, with really almost no issues, we were able to recreate this. Um, you know, the labels are a little bit weird. We could just right click on the cohort, format the values and do a custom value. And we'll type in here year, year, year. So that brings the year and then in a space and in quotes Q because we need to say like the, the actual quarter and then another Q not in quotes, that's going to return the numeric value. So now we have the cohort and the, the quarter sort of returning for each of those. And that's it. That is our cohort matrix. Uh, I use this one way more than you think. And, and it really doesn't take that much to do. Yeah, there's a couple calculations to really nail down the formatting and the color. But to create the core concept, the core visualization doesn't take much. Anyway, that's our video. If you did enjoy, be sure to like it down below. And of course, hit the subscribe button to get all this content direct to you uh, so you don't have to come back to YouTube and, and uh, you know, search for it. It's just there. It's in your inbox. Anyway, we'll catch you in the next one and we'll see you around.